When Hitler came to power, Hermann Goring organized a parlor meeting in his palatial home to raise money for the newly elected Nazi government. The event was attended by Germany's leading industrialists. One of the invitees, Edward Schulter, who attended the meeting, refused to give Hitler a single penny. Of all the great non-Jewish heroes of the Holocaust, Wallenberg, Schindler, Sugihara, only one man holds the distinction of having risked his life and that of his family in a desperate attempt to warn the United States, England, and the Jewish community that Hitler intended to murder all of Europe's Jews. Germany in the early 1930s, Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party take power. Hitler becomes chancellor and begins his 1,000-year Reich. In Breslau, formerly Prussia, and part of Poland since the end of World War I, Eduard Schulte, one of the country's leading industrialists, watches what is happening in horror. Born into a wealthy Dusseldorf family that ran a prestigious art gallery, Schulte was the general manager of the German-owned Gisha Erben, the largest producer of zinc in Europe. Schulte's top deputy at the company is a dedicated Nazi, Otto Fitzner, who has risen in the ranks and holds a number of high-level Nazi posts. September 1, 1939, the Nazis invade Poland. World War II begins. Breslau once again becomes part of Germany. Edward Schulte now makes the decision to start secretly working with the Allies in the hopes that it might contribute to defeating Hitler. During business trips to Switzerland, he meets with American and British intelligence representatives and passes on information gleaned from his deputy, the loyal Nazi, Otto Fitzner. Among other things, Schulte brings details about Germany's V-1 and V-2 rocket program to the Allies. January 20th, 1942, high-ranking Nazis meet in a villa outside of Berlin at Legwanze to organize the so-called final solution of the Jewish question, the Nazi plan to kill all the Jews of Europe. In July 1942, SS leader Heinrich Himmler stops in Breslau after inspecting the Auschwitz-Birkenau death camp. He is hosted by Otto Fitzner. Fitzner later brags to his boss, Edward Schulte, about what Himmler has told him about the final solution in Auschwitz. Within days, Schulte is in Switzerland with a report about the final solution, which he anonymously passes on through a Jewish business associate to protect him as a confidential source to the intelligence services he has been working with. The report makes its way to Gerhard Riegner, the Secretary General of the World Jewish Congress, who then sends it on to the U.S. Department of State and Rabbi Stephen Wise, the leading spokesman of the American Jewish community at the time. In October 1942, Riegner reluctantly identifies Schulte as the source of the information when the State Department insists on verifying that the report is a reliable one. In late December 1943, Schulte learns that he is in danger of arrest by the Gestapo. He flees to Zurich where he remains for the rest of the war, continuing to work with Allied intelligence. After VE Day, Edward Schulte returned to Germany to work with U.S. military occupation authorities. He is promised a high position in the new German government, but a role for Schulte never materializes. Viewed by many Germans as a traitor, a disappointed Schulte returned to Switzerland, where he tried to rebuild his life. He died in January 1966. Without the report that Edward Schulte sent, the establishment of the U.S. War Refugee Board and the work of Raoul Wallenberg, leading to the rescue of 250,000 Jews in 1944 and 1945, might never have taken place. 
but his role in bringing news of the final solution to the rest of the world remained virtually a secret until the early 1980s when a book about his exploits was published. Israel's National Holocaust Memorial Yad Vashem then recognized him as one of the righteous among the nations. And in his hometown of Dusseldorf, a street now bears his name. Albert Einstein once said, the world is a dangerous place to live, not because of the people who are evil, but because of those who don't do anything about it. Edward Schulte is an inspiration to those who are trying to make the world a less dangerous place. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Edward Schulte's granddaughter, Priscilla Schulte, Professor of Anthropology and Sociology and Campus Director of the University of Alaska Ketchikan Campus. It is a special honor on behalf of all the survivors to present posthumously to your grandfather, Edward Schulter, the Simon Wiesenthal Center's Medal of Valor. I'm so very touched. I'm, honor I'm honored to accept the Medal of Valor on behalf of my grandfather, Edward Schulte. I have dim memories of him from my childhood, but I remember my father, Ruprecht Schulte, speaking of, my fa my, of his father's dislike for Hitler. My grandfather disliked the Nazi party and viewed Hitler as a hoodlum and a gangster. Edward Schulte felt compelled to pass information about the final solution to the Allies because of his strong conviction and the horror he felt toward Hitler's regime. As a prominent business leader, Edward Schulte had access to information as well as business contacts outside of Germany that made it possible, and I suspect in his mind, imperative that he do what he could to avert the annihilation of the Jewish population of Europe. He made several trips to Switzerland after he heard of the, the final solution and made yet another journey once he knew the order had been issued. Although his family knew of his views, Edward Schulte did not share all of his activities with his family in order to protect them. His decision must have been a difficult one because of the danger it presented to himself and his family. However, it is clear that he acted as a matter of conscience. I close with the words of the Yad Vashem ceremony of 1988. It has been said that perfect valor is to do unwitnessed what we should be capable of doing before all the world. Edward Schulte's unwitnessed valor of 1942 is today inscribed in honor. His story is before us as a model, of, model act of valor when all the world was lost in the horror of the Holocaust. I am humbled and honored to accept the Medal of Honor on behalf of Edward Schulte. <laughs> 